So um, we're going to tie some knots as uh, as we go through the training. And um, before we do that, though, we've got to get to know our piece of rope because there's a whole vocabulary associated with tying knots. Because if I just go, well, you get that bit and you do that and you shove it through there, it can be a bit difficult to, to follow. So um, knowing a little bit of the vocabulary can be useful. So the end that you use to tie the knot is called the working end. The working end. And then you've got the middle of the rope, that's the standing part. And then the other end is called the dead end, the standing end, or even the bitter end. There are many words for it, but I believe that's where the saying the bitter end came from, was the end of the rope. Uh, we also learned yesterday, do you remember when we were making the rope bus, we pull, pulled up a fold of rope, and that's called a bite. But not a ng -ng -ng bite, a B-I-G-H-T bite. But if you were to cross the rope like so, that be then becomes a loop. So if you, we were going to cast loops like that, that's when the rope actually crosses when you make the circle. However, when we're working at Forest School, we may choose to change that vocabulary. It's, it's useful to know the real vocabulary out of a book, but if we were working with like younger, early years, maybe we might like to turn this into the snake. Sid the snake and he's got a head, which is the working end. He's got a belly, which is the standing part, and he's got his tail, which is the, uh, the working end. Uh, we might also need to decide which of our hands is our bossiest hand rather than our dominant hand. So uh, could I ask you all to just to wave at me with your bossy hand? Which is your bossy hand? Keep waving. Okay. Okie doke. Cool. Thank you. Because I, I am right hand bossy. Um, but uh, if you're sharing how to teach knots, it is useful once you're comfortable teaching them with your bossy hand, it is kind of quite cool to try and learn to teach them with your helping hand, your spare hand, your non-dominant hand, so, um, so that if you have people of that hand inclination, <laughs> then you'll be able to share it in their way. I'm also going to tell you that how I teach knots here as a big group situation is not how I teach knots at Forest School with individuals um, because, as we have discovered, Forest School is about following the interests and the needs of the individuals. So some learners respond well to like stories, for example, or songs, or they like pictures. So I might have pictures, like we've got some of those knot tying cards. So I might do it in that way. Um, but this is a way that I found works reasonably well with a big group situation. We're going to just start with very simple stopper knots. So you don't need your stick at the moment, but we will come back to it for something else. And you're all going to know this knot that we're starting with. I promise you, you're all going to know it. You may wonder why I'm doing it the way I'm doing it, but you're all going to know it. So hold your working ends, your snake's head, with your non-dominant hands, your helping hands. Take your bossy hand, slide down the snake's belly, down the standing part, and then turn it over so you've got like a pair of handlebars. So hold it like you're riding a bike. And then with your bossy hand, make a little bird speak with your thumb and forefinger and pinch where you've got hold of that standing part. And what we're going to do is we're going to rev our motorbike. Rum, rum, you know, like you go throttle back, throttle back. And what we're doing with this action is we're trying to slightly twist the cord between our thumb and our finger so that the rope wants to kink and make a loop. So I'm, I'm kind of twisting the cord in my fingers as I rev. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go one, two, three in a big room to cast a loop. Okay, ready? One, two, three, room to cast a loop. And the way I've cast my loop, I've got the long bit of the rope, the standing part on top of the short bit. I'm going to just pinch where that loop crosses. I'm going to pick up the working end, the snake's head. Hello, snake! And I'm going to post him through that loop away from me. And then pull apart. And everyone goes, it's a knot. <laughs> it's a knot. Yeah, it is a knot. It's an overhand knot, which is a type of stopper knot. 
So his sole purpose in life is to stop stuff. So whether that's like the ends of the rope running through another knot, or maybe I'm making a, a mobile or something, it stops the leaves coming off. Or you know when you've got your pajamas with the draw drawstrings and you lose them and you can it takes ages to get them through. You know, stop or not would stop that. You know, it's pretty handy. However, it does have a limitation that when pulled very tight can be really tricky to undo and particularly if it's got like wet in the rain so there is another option of stopper knot that would be better choice in, in to be able to undo it again and that is the figure of eight so we're going to follow the same pattern well to start with holding it in our spare hand and then slide our bossy hand down the standing part Turn it over to get that handlebar position. Again, make a bird speak with your thumb and forefinger. Grab the rope and we get ready to room to cast the loop. One, two, three, room. And uh, then we've got the long bit on top of the short bit. So a pinch where that crosses. So that's exactly the same as what we've done in the previous knot. But this time we pick up the working ends and hello snake's head. And this time he's gonna come around. So he's gonna check out other people in the circle until he sees somebody opposite. And he's gonna give them a hiss. And then he's gonna come through from the back towards you this time. And when you pull apart this time, you should have something that looks like a number eight. <laughs> number eight. So that is still a stopper knot, it has the same job as the overhand, but because it's a nice sort of long, thin knot, you can kind of like break the back of it and it's easier to undo. So if you need to undo it, that would be a better choice. And so yesterday, we did those, we used those knots, but we used them on the bikes when we made the handles on the bus. So, we could do those again, but we could do them on the bite. So on the bite means we make a fold. And so we're using these pieces now as if they were one. So this fold of the rope, the bite, becomes the new working end and you treat it as if it was one piece. So if we do the overhand on the bite, I've kind of got two tails now that I'm working with on, on the handlebars. So get that bird's beak with your bossy hand. I'm ready to room and you've got to cast the loop in both pieces. Just pretend it's one piece of rope. One, two, three, room. And so to do the overhand, I'm going to take the working end, which is the, which is the fold piece, bring it towards me. Hello, snake. And then through from the front to the back. And then when you pull apart, you should see that sort of round shape of the overhand. So that's your overhand on the bite. And so what the function of that is to create a fixed loop, a loop that won't get bigger or smaller. So we used it on the bus so that it wouldn't constrict around our hands. It's gonna, you know, it's a loop to hold onto. You could also use it to hang stuff up over a peg, that kind of thing. Um, but of course it's an overhand. So that means it's tricky to undo. So we can use a figure of eight on the bite if we want to be able to undo that. So again, if you kind of pick up a fold and into handlebars with your bossy hand, bird's beak, and one, two, three, rum, and just hold where that's crossing. And then this time, take the working end, which is the folded piece, bring it towards you. Hello, snake. And it's going to go around the circle till it sees the person opposite. And then through from the back towards you. And then when you pull apart, you should see that figure of eight in the uh, doubled rope. And again, same job, still a fixed loop, but easier to undo.